I have noticed in my study of Scripture, that God is a God of patterns, and He repeats them in Scripture, in order that we might recognize them, and use them as a gauge, for a correct understanding of Scripture. Have you ever found the repeating pattern for Jacob having two wives in Scripture? Have you ever found another man, taking two wives, after two consecutive seven-year periods? Although the details of each of these occurrences are different, the pattern is pretty much the same. What I am about to reveal to you, will cause you to question your current understanding of the wife of Christ. But if you just remember it is the pattern that is the same, and not the details, and also stick with me to the end. Then it will become clear to you, the picture, that scripture is painting. Now, the pattern involves Jacob and Jesus, and when they obtained their wives. We will start with Jacob. The back story starts, in the 29th chapter, of the book of Genesis. Jacob leaves his father Isaac, and journeys to the east, to the land where his uncle Laban lives. And from his daughters he is to obtain his wife. And Jacob saw Rachel, and she was beautiful. Therefore, he asked Laban for her hand in marriage. And Laban set the price for her hand, at seven years of service to him, caring for his livestock. Jacob loved Rachel and agreed to serve Laban, seven years, caring for his livestock, for her hand in marriage. And Jacob served Laban seven years, and after the seven years were fulfilled. The wedding celebration was given, and Jacob was drunk, and Laban took this opportunity to trick Jacob, and gave to him his oldest daughter. And Jacob knew her, and when he was sober, he knew what was done, and questioned Laban, why he would do such a thing. And he replied, It is our custom that the oldest daughter should be married ahead of the younger one. Keep in mind, that Jacob received his first wife. After, a seven-year period. But Jacob loved Rachel, and offered to serve Laban, seven years more for Rachel's hand in marriage. And Laban agreed, and Jacob served Laban seven years more for Rachel, and when the seven years were fulfilled, the marriage celebration was given, and Rachel became Jacob's wife. Notice, Jacob received both of his wives, after a seven-year period of time. And believe it or not, Jesus is going to repeat this same pattern, to get his wife. The back story begins in the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter. After the signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and the casting down of the stars to the earth, and the great earthquake, which all happens after the end of the seven-year tribulation. Then, in chapter 7, we see the church, the body of Christ, the wife of the Lamb in heaven, standing before the throne of God with palms in their hands. This is telling you that the tribulation is now at an end, because the changes in the sun, moon and stars, that occurs after the finish of that period, signifies that end, and the second coming of Jesus. So, the summary of the sixth chapter of Revelation is that, the seven-year tribulation has come to an end. Jesus has returned for His second coming. Jesus has set up His kingdom of heaven on earth. And the resurrection and rapture has occurred, placing the bride of Christ, in the heavenly kingdom, now on earth, standing before the throne of God. And when did Jacob receive his first wife? It was after a seven-year period. And likewise, Jesus will do the same. Let's verify this with Scripture, starting with, Revelation chapter 7. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. It says, after this. After what? After the close of the tribulation period, and His second coming, and the bringing of His kingdom of heaven to the earth, and now, the resurrection and rapture of the church. After these things, He saw, highlighted in the yellow, the body of believers, standing before the throne of God in heaven. 
Understand, this is not talking about the third heaven, but the kingdom of heaven, now on the earth. The body of Christ is standing before the throne of God, in the heaven of the kingdom, established on the earth. It is very important that you understand this moving forward, otherwise when you draw your conclusions, it will be in error. Revelation 6 is the answer to the prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth, as it is in heaven. If you don't realize that the kingdom of heaven is on the earth, after the opening of the sixth seal, then when you get to chapter 19 of Revelation, and it speaks of heaven, you will be misled. Continuing in chapter 7, it says, And one of the elders answered saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest? And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. One of the twenty-four elders asked John, Who are these that instantaneously appeared before the throne of God, and where did they come from? And John not knowing, replied, You know. And the elder answered, as highlighted in the yellow saying. These are they who came out of, great tribulation. Remember, chapter 6 is the end of the seven-year tribulation period, and the opening of the second coming of Jesus. Then, in chapter 7, we see, from nowhere, a multitude of people standing before the throne, that came out of the great tribulation. In other words, this group of people, that miraculously appeared before the throne of God. This group of people, that created a nation in one day, came out of the Great Tribulation. After the Great Tribulation had come to an end, uniting Jesus with this multitude of people, by a resurrection and rapture, that occurred at this particular point in time, making these the first fruits of the resurrection, and the wife of the Lamb, which Jesus received, after a seven-year span of time, like unto Jacob. And it is these who will rule and reign with Christ in his kingdom of heaven, now on the earth. Okay. Now with the understanding, that Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, and his first fruit's wife, is here on the earth, after the tribulation period is closed. Let's look at Revelation 14. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his Father's name written in their foreheads. This study is not to figure out who the one hundred forty and four thousand are. It is to establish, as highlighted in the yellow, the fact that Jesus, his kingdom of heaven, and his first fruit's wife, feet are standing on the Mount of Olives, on the earth. And from this location on the earth, the following events will occur, in his presence. Jesus, residing in the mountains of Israel, with his first fruit's wife, that would be us, will send out an angel, especially to the nation of Israel, saying, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred, and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. It says, The hour of His judgment is come. This is referencing the separation of the sheep and goat nations, and they who remain, will enter into his kingdom. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Again, Jesus sends out another angel with the news of the day, saying Babylon is fallen. Babylon is the great city of Jerusalem, and at his second coming, just as entrance into the world, will be enough to destroy the city of Jerusalem, and the armies that will be occupying her. 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Again, Jesus sends out another angel, with the news of the day, warning the nations not to take the mark of the beast or to worship his image. Remember, this is the third angel Jesus sent out to the nations, while his feet is standing upon the Mount of Olives. Therefore, the mark of the beast, will be an issue for the nations, even when Jesus himself and his wife, are back in the earth reigning. How amazing is that! I need you now, to follow along closely going forward, for you to grasp the second marriage of Jesus. Remember, he is repeating the pattern after Jacob, who married two wives. To again, establish that Jesus is on earth. I want to look at two verses in Revelation, chapter 18, saying, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is the same angel spoken of in Revelation chapter 14, who said, Babylon is fallen. But here, it is given more details, about the angel himself, and his message. It says, This angel came down from heaven. And we know it is speaking about the kingdom of heaven, now on the earth, because in Revelation 14, he was sent out by Jesus, being located on the earth, upon the Mount of Olives. Continuing, we will look at some verses in chapter 19. Scripture says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Highlighted in the brown, it says, And after these things. After what things? After the destruction of the whore of Babylon, at the coming of Jesus, with his holy angels, the kingdom of heaven, and the resurrected saints, his wife. Highlighted in the yellow, it says, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Those people is us, glorified. And our being in heaven, is not referring to the third heaven, but rather, the kingdom of heaven, now on the earth. As chapter 19, is a continuation of chapter 18, when the kingdom of heaven is on earth. And chapter 18, is a continuation of chapter 14, also when the kingdom of heaven is on the earth. Now comes the announcement of Jesus' second marriage. Scripture says, Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Can this announcement actually be talking about us? Think about it. In this study, the church, his bride, became his wife, at our resurrection and rapture, in chapter 7. It was at that time that we made ourselves ready, by putting on fine linen, clean and white. It was at that time we put on our robe of righteousness. It was at that time we held palms in our hands. And it was at that time that we were glorified, united and became one with Jesus. How then, can it be speaking to us, to again, make ourselves ready? And be granted to put on again, fine linen, clean and white. 
and to get married again, to Jesus, of whom we are already one with, when this announcement is being made. No. This is not speaking to us, about us. But rather, about his second marriage, which we will see in Revelation chapter 20. I can hear most of you shouting at the video, claiming heresy, and melting down. But I believe if you continue on, Revelation chapter 20, will be as a sedative to calm you down. Be a little more patient and we will be there in a few. Notice what verses, 11 and 12 says. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Again, I want to bring to your attention, that immediately after the announcement of the marriage of the Lamb, Jesus left heaven. The opening of heaven, is not speaking of the third heaven, but rather the kingdom of heaven, which is now on the earth. Jesus comes out of the kingdom of heaven, now on the earth, on a white horse with his armies of angels, to make war against this latter-day army, this battle of Armageddon, that is warring against Israel. They win the war and cast Satan into the bottomless pit, for one thousand years. And once this is accomplished, the marriage of the Lamb takes place. Take a look at the wording of this wedding announcement I drew up. It says, Announcement The wedding of the latter fruits, and King Jesus the Christ, will commence, after the latter day war. I term this marriage, the latter fruits, and it will happen after the latter day war. We are called the first fruits of the resurrection, which presupposes another resurrection to come after. This latter fruits resurrection, will take place, after the war of Armageddon. After that war, Scripture says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Highlighted in the yellow, it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. This is speaking about us, who are already the firstfruits wife of Jesus, who have been ruling and reigning with Jesus on thrones, judging the nations, ever since our resurrection and rapture, was performed in chapter 7. Highlighted in the green, it says, And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Just like the first fruits church of Jesus, suffered great tribulation, before becoming the wife of Jesus. So will the latter fruits church of Jesus, suffer great tribulation, of being beheaded, before becoming the wife of Jesus. And they too, will be resurrected to sit on thrones with Jesus, to rule and reign with Him, for a thousand years. This first, and latter marriage of Jesus, over two different periods of time, comprises the first resurrection, of which death has no power. And repeats the same pattern, set forth by Jacob, in his time. So, as Jacob married twice, to obtain two wives, over two different spans of time. So will Jesus marry twice, to obtain one wife, over two different spans of time. No matter what span of time you find yourself in. It is always a season where Jesus is ready to receive you unto himself. If you want to make Jesus, the Lord of your life, and have a reserved seat in the first fruits resurrection. Tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe He was dead and buried. 
And tell God, I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart. Then, at that day, you will be glorified, and one with Jesus, and be a minister of judgment to the nations. Thanks for watching. Check these things out for yourself to see if it is in line with Scripture. But one thing is for sure, and that is, Jesus is present in every time span to save you from your sins. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Amen.